Welcome to the Palace of Megapixels. This is Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White, and with me is my co-host, Todd Stark. Hello. And Lacey Finley. Hello. Happy Monday. How is everyone today? Sleepy. Sleepy. Yeah. I'm alive. I'm cold. Cold yes. is a good one, too. Yeah. Really? Did you get snow yesterday? We didn't, but we got frost, so, you know. That's, a, that's snow in Tennessee. Yeah. That's <laughs> fair enough. I was a very, um, like, cartoon curmudgeon having to leave the house yesterday with it snowing, and I'm just, like, muttering expletives under my breath while the snow's smacking me in the face. It was just so cranky. Yeah, you need to keep that snow right up there. We don't Please. need it. I mean, like, I want... Too if, early? I, if we get snow, I just want enough to where they go. I go to work for four hours, and then they let me go home, and I, I get paid Isn't for the rest like of the day. that, like, a half an inch in Tennessee? No, no, not at our work. They're, they're starting to get a little bit braver around here. Yeah. so We closed down for no one. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> the North is like, we'll suffer through this. It's fine. You are used to it. Mm-hmm. Leave early. That's all we're going to tell you. <laughs> so uh, what have you guys been playing? Lace, go first, please. I just finally started Red Dead Redemption 2 yesterday. Very Welcome to the party. That. I think I just got past pretty much the exposition part where I'm out of like the first chapter and gotten to where it's now an open world for me. So I'm not very far, um, but it is gorgeous. Oh, it's so And I gorgeous. did listen to your review and so far I have the same exact complaints, but everything yeah. else is great. He moves super slow. It's yeah. just, come on, man, a little pep in your step. Once you adjust I, to I've that, I've starved you. Your stamina is supposed to be longer. <laughs> yeah. Once you adjust to that, it it kind of just you forget about it. Yeah, but like I said, I haven't delved too far into it yet to like really be able to shape an opinion or anything of it myself. But it, I mean, it is gorgeous, and so far, I can see that I, I'm going to get lost in it for quite a while. Nice. And the thing I've ran into is um, I've heard about fast travel. But mm. I just I'm scared if I fast travel I'm going to miss something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, definitely one of those where I've been told like talk to people every encounter you can. Oh yeah, uh, come across to take advantage of it because they've really fully fleshed out a lot of uh, world story and the characters and all that. I mean, well, seven years in the making, so we're hoping there's a lot in there to. Yeah, to really you, you can literally into. start a fight with everybody. I know. I love that the like the the thing is greet or antagonize. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is the two options when you come across anybody, and it's like it's really hard for me because like I keep debating whether I really just want to be evil because that is more fun. But it for is. some reason, I still feel bad. Uh huh. Like, yeah, I, I hate when that little game. honorable thing goes down. I hate that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like I just feel like I'm like, oh, let's be evil. This will be fun. And then as soon as I like have to kill someone or something, I'm like, oh, now I feel bad. I have guilt for the whole thing. <laughs> when the poor programmers had to stop writing code for that character, now I feel guilty. <laughs> I was doing something the other day, and uh, I, I think people tried to um, jump me on the side of the road. And that happens so much, and like sometimes they're just there's too many of them. You you can't. Either you run or you die. But I killed like three of them, and I was like, well, I don't want anybody to find this. So I picked one of them up and was going to go throw them in the the river, right? Nice. So I walk him down to the river. I go to drop him, and I'm standing in the water, and all of a sudden an alligator grabbed my leg, and I swear I just I screamed. (laughs) I didn't know there were alligators in this game, and I screamed, and my little girl thought I hurt myself. Good good to know on the lookout. Scared the hell out of me. We're always going through the river to cover our tracks, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only in one certain part. Like, you'll kind of get towards the bayou, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was oh, just going to ask if that's where it throws you into. Yeah. Well, I killed one of those bastards the other day. Skint nice. it. Very cool, very cool. So I'm assuming this yeah, that's, is what you've also been playing? I, I, that's what I've been playing. It's good. I can't stop playing it. It's it's too good. I'm going to have to get on the bandwagon, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a lot of fun. Well, what have like you been I, playing? 
Well, uh, since I can't say you tried Just Cause again. (laughs) No, I I literally didn't pick it up this week. So I've been, you know, focusing on the evening when I have a little free time. I'll I'll sit down with Fallout Shelter, which I've really been trying to, you know, build and and really make a, a great vault, I guess, make sure that everyone's well trained, everyone's armed properly, doing it right for whatever reason, and then also trying to inch out those last few trophies as difficult as they are. But I did pick up last night Burly Minute C. And it is a very <clears throat> interesting and fun game in the sense that you the game has like a very modern art style with you know where it's uh, doesn't have the outlines to the characters. Everything's kind of, I don't want to say like the... They almost blend in with everything. Yeah, but it's it's very defined characteristics in a way that you know what you're looking at, but it's also abstract. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So the story plays out like a storybook. You know, everything's kind of coming out on text. It's saying, you know, this character size a certain way, and then it just reads like a storybook. You go through and you find a map and or at the beginning you have a map. You're trying to figure out where the map can lead you. When you go out into the world, the very first thing that happens is that you're eating, eaten by a giant whale. From that point, you have to figure out how to get out of the whale. There are multiple ways to get out of the whale. It just depends on what you want to do. From that point, depending on how you approach getting out of the whale, will lead you down a different path to adventure. And... Each of these paths are at least, from what I read, 12 endings, and it probably takes you somewhere between 10 minutes at most to really get through an entire playthrough from the start of the story to the end. And then you'll circle back around, back to the town, and go back out into the world again to try out another path. But what's interesting about it is they don't just play it off like, oh, well, you know, you've just got to replay the story. They remember what happened before. So the story oh, reflects that. Interesting. So like, okay, do you remember what we did here? Maybe we don't do that this time. Or hey, maybe we try it this way this time. So Clever. I like how they kind of do that. And then yeah. when you kind of come back around to the start again, it's like, ah, that was a great story. Go back out and try it again. See what else you can do. So there are multiple paths every way that you do it. It's very simple gameplay, so it's not difficult in any way. And what's I mean, it called you, again? Burly Minute C. You can actually get it for free right now on PlayStation Plus. Ah, okay. So definitely download it. And I would probably have beat it completely and seen all the endings, but I ran into a glitch. So I'm a little frustrated with that because I thought, hey, I'll just finish this up right now and I can talk about it on the show. (coughs) But I hit a glitch. I don't know what it's doing, but for what when I get to this one spot, the controls just stop working. And even when you reset it, and I've I read online there are only a few people that seem to have encountered it. You have to, like, close it down and restart it completely for it to, okay. to kind of come back and work. But I just, you know, reset the game inside. And, I mean, you I couldn't even move when it went back to the beginning. So it's like it ruins the controls completely. So I don't know what the hell. So I'm going to try it again, see if I can get it to work. But I was a little disappointed that I hit a glitch that close to being done with it. Yeah. That so, sucks. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Last last week on the live stream mm-hmm. that I that I didn't make it to, but you were there. I was there in spirit. I heard mm-hmm. you. Did you mention foul play? I did. How? What? Okay. Did you like it? Yeah. I mean, I think it would be fun maybe with more people. Right. So it's you so know, it's multiplayer. Yeah, you can do two players. Okay. Um, it's a nice little beat 'em up. It's got the controls are a little iffy mm-hmm. at first because the way the the combat works. It's very particular, so I think it's something you just have to kind of get accustomed to. But once right. you do, you can it, it feels smooth. I think the only frustration that I had playing it is you're trying to keep the crowd going. And the only way you can kind of keep the crowd going is keep your combo up. And the more right. combo yeah. you get, the higher the hit points. I mean, everyone's going crazy, so that just kind of like adds to it. The problem is, is that the characters, the enemies kind of move kind of on that slanted way that a lot of those beat-em-ups did, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's these very particular enemies that are, I think they fly. I can't remember what they, they are exactly, but 
they're in the air and they're moving side to side. So they're already difficult to hit going side to side, but now they're up in the air and it just makes them even more difficult to reach. So they can easily mess up your combo. And there might, there might be, you know, upgrades that can help you with that and so on and so forth, but I haven't played it enough to really say that for sure. Yeah, but it is fun. It. I would recommend checking yeah. it out because I really like the, like the aesthetic of it. Yeah, I got it downloading because I I'd read the uh, I guess the description of it and it was like I guess you're try you're putting on a play, but at mm-hmm. the same time you're you're it's a beat 'em up and yeah. like you said you got to keep the crowd into it and yeah. just yeah it uh, seems like a clever little premise. Yeah. I need to check that mm-hmm. out myself. I need and to even, start writing all these things down because like uh-huh. I'll start to forget once we start playing too, or talking about too many games and oh yeah <laughs> yeah there's too many out there. That's just really a, like. People get so mad when those kind of games are offered for free on PlayStation Plus or games with gold. But if you play them, they end up being a good game. Yeah, and they're fun. For one, I've wanted to play Burly Minute C for a long time. When I even saw it when it came out, and I was like, oh, I need to remember that. For whatever reason, it slipped through the cracks, and then here it is, and I'm like, yes, you know, I right. finally get to play it. PlayStation will remind you. Didn't weren't mm-hmm. you interested in this? No, didn't, didn't you want that? <laughs> and yes, most of the time, game. yes. All right, guys, let's talk about some news. Let's I've got it. a little bit of news. Um, first of all, Riot Games has been in the news quite a bit over the last few months due to allegations of being a hostile work environment. Oh, God. But now the company is actually having to deal with a class action lawsuit filed by a former employee, Jessica Negron, and present employee, Melanie McCracken. I struggled with that name. Melanie McCracken. Melanie. Her name is Melanie. <laughs> Both. <laughs> I really didn't think you said Melanie at all. Yeah, Melanie McCracken, excuse me. Uh, both actually claim that Riot Games has violated the Equal Pay Act of California as well as discriminated countless women. In fact, discrimination against women is not a new claim because we've heard that before and I think right. we even mentioned it. Uh, there are also previous claims that Riot uh, has that they're a uh, bro culture. And as far as what the lawsuit aims to do... It is said that plaintiffs are hoping to enforce a change at the company, such as equal pay for women, doing the same job as men, and overall discrimination against women, whether it be sexual or retaliation. Now, we actually spoke about these claims against the company earlier in the year, and I remember they said they shared a plan that they were going to improve, but <laughs> it sounds like it didn't work. So, uh-uh. I think a well, lawsuit. Is this a brand new one, or is this an extension of what? Was I think going this on is before? new. This is a new allegation okay. stemming so off of everything recently. that's, yeah, I mean, this is something okay. that's just continued and continued at the place. I'm really surprised they're not shut down at this point because they're they're at that point now where it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. You know. If they don't change quick. Yeah, right. they, they need to step it up. I don't know what their issues are, but don't didn't we know somebody well, that worked there? I don't know. Riot Games sounds so familiar. If I am wrong, I want to say that Enola worked there. I'm almost positive Ooh, she it's swore. It's starting to sound vaguely familiar. I, but I, I couldn't remember the name. talking about any of that. Yeah. But you, you've talked with her more but, than I have. Yeah, I feel like I feel like she mentioned that she did work her. there at, at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, she could. Yeah. But, I, but I could be wrong. You might. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we might have could to be wrong. Out so if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I just I feel like I remember her saying that she she worked at a place that made like League of Legends or something like that. So mm-hmm. I could be wrong. I'd love to hear her take on it. You know, see if yeah. she ever encountered that. If she worked there. If I'm wrong, right? <laughs> or we uh, might be making this whole thing up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just that's why I'm covering my ass right now. Uh, Okay, (laughs) next story I've got is back in uh, 2013, 2014, before we were even doing this show, uh, Sony Online Entertainment was hit with a DOS attack causing a network crash that affected their service and ultimately their business, costing them around $95,000 in damages. Well, last week, the man responsible was charged with denial of service attacks and has pled guilty to said charges, which could lead to a fine of $250,000 and up to 10 years in prison. Good. I guess I know which one he's going to be serving. Was mm-hmm. he rich? Now, his sentencing will actually be carried out on March 1st of next year, so I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Because I think wow. you're, I think these businesses are fed up with yeah. cheaters, right. with people attacking their service. Start hitting them hard. 
Make them pay. They have been coming down. I've been hearing a lot more stories about stuff like this with uh, people cheating and just flat out. It's nope. It's a huge mm-hmm. nope anymore. I, I think don't they. Blame did. Them. I mean, it just kills everyone else's experience as well. Like, yeah, yeah it does. Like, like, what did that? How did that help any other gamer? In the service at that Because I remember when that happened, actually. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it like around Christmas or something? Like it was around a holiday. Because I feel like I remember we were trying to download something or do something. Yeah, I feel like it was a holiday. And it's just like it was down for the entire weekend. Mm -hmm. Shit, it was down for a month, wasn't it? It was down for a while. I don't think it was that long, but it was was down. So this is not the one where they were down for 30 days? It could have been. No, that was PlayStation 3, I think. 2013 would have been... Could have been still on a PS3. It was still yeah, viable at the now. point. I just oh, yeah. remember, like, I, I feel like it was a holiday because, you know, the hubs and I were, like, all getting ready to probably play some new games that we got. And we're <laughs> like, what? Uh, what? what? Why can't we, you know, um, okay. Can't do anything. And because it's so rare that it happens to PlayStation, you know, that it was mm-hmm. just, like, it was, it was a big deal. But to lose that kind of money, yeah, smack them down. Mm-hmm. Smack. Uh, last story I've got here, which was something that I didn't hear about at the time, so I'm surprised it kind of went under the radar this long, is a story surfaced last week that Swedish Twitch streamer who went by the handle Bogdan Ak, I think, or Bogdan, uh, to those who knew him best, <laughs> reportedly passed away during TwitchCon. Uh, oh, wow. Bogdan had actually been competing that weekend in the Fortnite Fall Skirmish Tournament, and had actually been recently starting to make a name for himself within the Fortnite community. Unfortunately, at this time, there's really no official word as to what caused this. Uh, I mean, he was a young man. Fortnite. So I mean, no one was saying anything about, you know, drug use or anything like that. He it could have Fortnite. had a flute cart problem. Right. I don't know. So oh, wow. it's just, uh, yeah. And uh, again, I'm really surprised that we didn't hear about it there. Like the news didn't well, break. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I guess that while we were there, but shortly mm-hmm. after, I feel like we would have because there's. Well, I mean, when you're at those cons, you're there's mm-hmm. just so much going on. You're not plugged in necessarily to all of the news and stuff while while the festivities are going on and all <laughs> that. But yeah, I feel like within at least a few days afterwards, I, yeah, for sure, I would have heard trickles on Twitter or something. Yeah. But I mean, if he was bigger in Sweden, then I guess I wouldn't be surprised that maybe I hadn't heard about it. Sure, mm. and we don't you really know. follow the Fortnite communities either. No. <laughs> There's that, yeah. So that that probably had a lot to do with it. But, I uh, think Fortnite did it. Mm. Anyway, um, our heart, well wishes go out to his family, his community, and remember to love those you have because you never know what might happen. Yeah, True I feel that. Like we get more and more of these stories. I know it's. Like I hate to. I hate so to keep young. bringing down the room, but I've got. I've got news to report. Damn it! You're not bringing down yeah. just the room. You're bringing down the internet. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's go into some quickets, quickets. that are a little little yeah. bit brighter. I got a, a handful of these. Um, first of all, PUBG's trying to make a comeback because they've added Joker and Harley Quinn skins to Is their game. Make you okay, play? how does that fit? I don't know. I guess because now you're <laughs> Joker and Harley Quinn and you can go kill people. And Ah, look at that. I'm Joker. I guess that's kind of fine. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You don't, not happy about that? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't have PUBG. It's only on well, Xbox. But, but I'll, I'll take Blackout over it's PUBG. It's only on Xbox? Xbox mm-hmm. and PC. It's a, oh. It's coming to hmm. PS4, though. Well, we'll see. Uh, an update on episodes three and four of Telltale's The Walking Dead is on the horizon. Nice. Okay. So we'll, we'll hopefully hear something maybe next week. I can well, report on that. Are they still planning on releasing the physical copy this month? I don't know. Because I thought I heard that it was like the 26th or 27th they were possibly going to release a physical copy of the last season of The Walking Dead. That's what I'm going to pick up when okay. it comes out. Well, we'll see. Right. I don't know. Nothing's been uh, announced yet. So we are probably know. still trying to iron out all the details. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hitman Absolution and Hitman Blood Money are coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Yay. Excited about that? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. I liked Absolution. Absolution was okay. Yeah, I was going to say, but I mean. I don't think I ever I got like into Blood Money. so long ago. I, don't, I didn't play it either. I mean, Humble Bundle just finally released like the first season on Hitman, <laughs> so, or this last one, so I feel like it's, whatever. Yeah. It, it's a thing. It's, it's coming. <laughs> it's just, it's happening if you're excited. Uh, Nintendo is reportedly hiring for a brand new Zelda project. Ooh. Do you think it's going to be another uh, What's Switch be? game, or do you think it's, it'll be a 3DS yes. game? 
I think it'll be Breath of the Wild too. Think so? I think it'll be. <laughs> They've Switch never called. Switch is doing so well right now. Why wouldn't yeah. they? I feel like it would be silly to not. I would just. Yeah. I could be wrong. Like you guys know Nintendo better than I do. Well, but... they they've always prided themselves on doing something different every time. I'd say, with exception to Super Mario Galaxy, because that was the first time actually them doing them them doing a sequel to a game like that outside of Super Mario Brothers one and three, or even two for that matter. So. There's that, I just don't see them redoing that game immediately. Nah, I don't either. So, we'll see. Uh, early reviews for the PlayStation Classic have been uh, lukewarm at best. Well, how, why wouldn't it be? Yeah, I think we pretty much hit the nail on the head <laughs> last week. Well, yeah, we were talking about like the games that was coming out on it. What There was like two. We were like, oh, I'd play that again. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> I, you know, maybe I'll play it. Maybe not. I don't know. I mean, they just rele- <laughs> re-released, what, Rondo of Blood and uh, Symphony of the Night. So mm-hmm. there's two games that can't be on it. Crash Bandicoot cannot be on it. Yeah. Spyro cannot be on it. And they're, they're remakes of these old games, so yeah. why wouldn't you just go get those? Right. And everyone's looking forward to the remake of Final Fantasy VII. So, again, why go get that? And And I can go buy that on the PlayStation Store right now. Right. For less. The exact copy, probably. (laughs) Because, yeah, wasn't it like 150 Just 100 bucks. No, just 100 bucks. Oh, it was 100. But still, that's insanely high high for the games they're offering. If they were smart, they would do one round of this and then be done. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, they're just, I think, trying to compete with all the other classic mini things that have been getting released over the last year or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And since PlayStation 1, I guess that was all they could kind of get together. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm uh, speculating, people. Speculation know. is good. Uh, the cast of Big Hero 6 is going to reprise their roles in Kingdom Hearts 3. That's cool. I'm excited about that. I like, I like when they can get the real Disney actors for their roles. Like, the fact that James Woods was Hades in the Kingdom Hearts yeah. games was amazing. That was so perfect. Yeah, but I really don't care about Kingdom Hearts. I know. I know you don't. Wonder, I don't know I why, know. though. I'm trying, like, to look it up. Because, so it, be cool. do, you, do you like Disney movies? Oh, I love Disney movies. Do you like Final, Final Fantasy? They're okay. And see, that's that's what's bringing you down. No, I the think Final it's Fantasy the mixture. Aspect. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. That angle of it, you're just like... Uh, it's like I kind of like yeah. one part of it, but it's the other part no, that I'm not really. Fond I would of. rather play Final Fantasy than play Kingdom Hearts. I don't know, man. I, I like the the mesh of characters and stuff. Nah. I just all I'm waiting for now is since we've got that, I want to hear that Tom Hanks and Tim Allen are coming back for. The they Taylor are. Story. You didn't hear that. Are they for sure? No, I don't know. I'm no, just, you're not. I so just said that. Uh, no, we it, were just speculating <laughs> that it might be his brother or something in one of the podcasts. Yeah, the voice but see, they could something. they could have secretly recorded that dialogue where they were recording for Toy Story 4. That's true. So why not? True that. I mean, you're already there. Go ahead and do and it. Just rip it off from that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just add it in. Uh, finally, PAX East 2019 is going to take place from March 28th to March 31st. So the ass end of earlier March. Than last year, right? Uh, uh, maybe about by a week. I, yeah. I really wish they'd flip east and west. Yeah, they really need to because that's, I mean, come on, man. It's going like to be cold. cold. I just hate like carting around like large coats, scarves, hats, gloves. And oh, they, they have that nice the coat room. They did. The coat check. That's yeah. He did. But People like, were chicken in their axes and shit. In <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Now you know what to look forward to at the end of March. All the news coming out of there and us talking about it. Will uh, be. All right. You ready for some truth or trash? Truth or trash. Yeah. I got three today. Give me. I got three. Three. Mm-hmm. Just three. First of all, what's well, better than just one or none? Yeah. yeah. Usually it's just one or two. Okay. First up, Sony is creating a new VR system for the PS5. Um, I have heard reports that they did a what a patent for a new like hand tracker. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah, I think it's going to be a revised you know model. Okay, yeah. possibly. You I know, feel a like truth. More I feel like yeah. it would be silly not to. Right. It's been. I think it's been pretty successful. Mm-hmm. They've mm-hmm. sold more than all the other ones. So. Well, I mean, it's the affordability and just the mm-hmm. quality along with it, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. No, I feel like it would be stupid not to, so I'm going to say truth. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm going to agree. Especially with PlayStation, you know, because they're the best. That's right. You know, that's the reason why they never wanted to do crossplay, because why would you need another system? That's right. But now they're doing crossplay. <laughs> now I got my snark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Crackdown 3 will be known as New Providence. Huh. I think they're going to get rid of the, the shit that goes with this game. Just by renaming it? Maybe. This game is going to be... I don't, I, just, I don't think this game is going to be good. I don't know enough about it to have an educated guess, so I'm just going to say trash. Okay. Because isn't that the one we're not even sure if it's ever going to finally get done? No, nah, it's got a release date. February 22nd, the same day. Hasn't it had like five release dates, though? Or am it I was supposed to launch. Game? Well, they never said a date. They just said it was going to be a launch title for the Xbox One X. I feel like I've been hearing at it the last three E3s. That's oh, why yeah. That's why yeah, they've right. talked about it. But it's going to come out this time. Okay. It might get delayed again, and that's probably truth. Truth? All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, just, I'm just going to be contrary and say trash. And finally, PUBG will be on PlayStation consoles next year. Yes, truth. I'm going to say truth because I feel like Todd's confident. He is. He's very confident. I'm confident today. He picked three ones that <laughs> he I'm... He was just saying about how he'd play it if it was on PlayStation. All right. <clears throat> now it's time for some weird news. Is there sex in it? There is. Yes. Thank a you. A lot today. I feel like you went and found me some sex this week. Well, it just kind of stumbled into my lap, and I was like, well, here we go. That's how sex does. Yeah, it does. It uh, stumbles into your lap. but So gamers are weird, right? Not all I mean, of them. People are weird in general. Yeah, it's all relevant. People, yeah. I mean, there's there's a trend uh, that I don't understand, but, you know, to each his own. I'm not going to judge. Mm-hmm. So, with Red Dead Redemption 2 out into the world, <laughs> the Old West has uh, been on a lot of people's minds, especially gamers. And so, not just when they play their game, they're thinking about the Old West, but in their downtime, they're thinking about the Old West because... You know, Pornhub has reported that searches for cowboy porn has seen a significant increase. Holy cow. Stuff like cowboy, Wild West, Western, and even just straight up Red Dead Redemption (laughs) 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 Uh, have seen an increase in searches of up to 700%. Damn. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. If there was zero on one day and then there was four searches on the next day, that would be 700%. Perhaps. Uh... If that weren't enough, after BlizzCon, there was uh, an announcement for a character, a new Overwatch character called Ash. Overwatch porn searches shot up, up to 1,200%, because she was supposed to be the sexy, hot new character, so everybody wanted that. So, you know. Well, I mean, is Pornhub giving them what they're asking for? Well, I'm sure they're trying to find I whatever. I guess that is the next question. Whatever there gets results. in results. I think it's to jump in with the 700 percent and search it. I mean, I, cowboy porn. I think would probably be there. Cowpoke. Overwatch <laughs> porn. I don't know, but that doesn't mean that someone hasn't hey, done cosplay. Well, what's the rule number like for anything that there is? There 85 is wasn't. A, yeah, something like that. There's always a porn yeah. version. I mean, I wa- of it somewhere. Mm-hmm. I watched Spider Man Bang Rogue the other day. Did you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. How did he not die? I don't know. <laughs> she didn't touch him, like with her hands. Oh, okay. But he, uh, all right. I'm not going to get into the details of that. Uh, maybe he wore a condom. A webbed one? Possibly. Oh, webbed Lord. for her pleasure? Yeah. Uh, Possibly. <laughs> there. Okay, you know what? Uh, I don't. I, I guess I can understand the kink. Uh, and you know, goddamn guys, you know it's guys that are looking this up. I can't uh, imagine. There might be a woman out there. be surprised. Yeah. I would be equal opportunity for a stuff well, like yeah. that. Yeah, you'd be surprised. But you would be, I think I think the numbers would still show higher <laughs> numbers of men than women. Yeah, that's historically. Fair, historically. Say, yeah. I don't know, man. Or it's that 20, it's to it. be 2019. Women are just equally freaks nowadays. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm glad well, I'm not I out there running always around. I have been. It's just now they're deciding to say screw it and admit to it more. No. I, I'm going to go against it. Like, the women in my group <laughs> are not freaks, but like these... Like, you hear all the stuff that these younger ones are doing. Like, you're like, wow. I'm glad. Like, I don't know if I'd be able to walk now. I don't now. know, man. If you ever go with a bunch of women to a strip club, they are they are way worse. Oh, God, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, that's because they all the women go to them. They are way worse at how they react. <laughs> 
all the women in the strip club go to the women. I don't well, understand. Yeah, that. Uh-huh. yeah, because they don't have to worry about it. right. And they get just as much money. Okay, well, uh, past the porn, uh, <laughs> killing to video games. <laughs> Killing Floor 2 will soon kick off its new holiday event, Twisted Christmas. And if you want to make things extremely weird, nothing is more appropriate than adding a playable character called Badass Santa and allowing said character to be voiced by the one and only Gary Busey. Oh, my God. Nice. So, I'm, I'm <laughs> very curious to say. What say? Ho, 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 guys. <laughs> crazy bitch. He probably say something crazy, man. Like, you know, because he don't have that filter in his yeah. head anymore. Get me those reindeer down here now. I'm going to kill some people. Henry Rowan Gardner. All of this is free to play, so if you want to have Gary Busey Santa in your roster, by all means, join in this holiday season. Not a sponsor. (laughs) Okay, uh, are you ready to play our favorite shopping game? I'd buy that for a dollar. Uh Uh-huh. So, Uh uh uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> it, okay, like I like it better when Shady tries to rip me off. Does he? He does. Oh, uh, he's just trying now, to sell you know. something. But he's yeah, but like he steals shady, it. So he steals know. this stuff. Like he doesn't like ha- he doesn't sell it from a storefront like you do. He does admit it. Well, fell, fell yeah. off the truck, man. Yeah, I mean, he took the five finger discount and he took it. But he kicked it off yeah. the truck. He didn't fall off the truck. Perhaps he did. But we're not here he to talk about Shady. Off with the truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kirby. We all know Kirby, right? Oh, yeah. Big, yeah. fluff, pink ball of cute and cuddliness. You know, mm-hmm. he's just... Uh, when he devours his enemies whole, you can't help but you want to squeeze him because he's just so oh, big shit, and no. fluffy. He really is adorable. <clears throat> yeah. I'm thinking about what kind of gas is he going to have. But you know what? Never does he have gas. He the doesn't. cutest kind. Mm-hmm. The kid's little cloud puffs. <laughs> so what if I could tell you you could bring the experience of kirby home in a very fun and exciting and cuddly way no okay <clears throat> okay like cute and cuddly i'm going to present to you the special how laboratory giant kirby plush pillow a fairly accurate life-sized fairly accurate <laughs> <laughs> depiction of kirby that you can snuggle up with you could just get all in there and when I mean get all up in there, you can stick your head into his mouth. Why? Because Why, he though? because he's got a pillow in there, and that's like his tongue. So you just you stick your head what into. What is it that? Okay. He's it's a pillow. I'm, I'm scared of that, everybody. That would smother the hell out of you. But but his his mouth is wide open. It's a gape, like when he's trying to suck an enemy in, and you just stick your head in there on the pillow that's his tongue, and you just you snuggle up with Kirby. Sounds like a trap to me. You think so? I feel like somebody's going to do an internet search on this now after the podcast. Probably. Uh, You're going to really get to know. Goes up seven (laughs) hundred (laughs) percent. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, because you know what? I'm not going to go there. Uh, So get to know what his enemies feel like whilst inside his mouth. This one-of-a-kind experience can be yours, (laughs) June 2019. But how much are you willing to pay? You know what I didn't do? I didn't put down a price. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to write down the price. Do you remember it? Uh, oh, so. Yes, I do. Actually, I do. I'm not paying more than $30 for that thing. I mean, it's a big pillow. Well, I mean, I don't know what li- fairly accurate life size is for I Kirby. I mean, um, he, you try to measure him up to someone like Link or Samus, and, you know, he's always kind of like... Okay. But also think okay, that so. you can stick your head inside of him, so mm-hmm. how big I can get would he have him. to be? Because, I mean, you don't want to smother, so it's got to be pretty big for you to get your head in there. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Loose lips sink ships. So, I mean, how much... I mean, you, how much would I actually pay for it? Probably yeah. like 20 bucks. I'm paying 30 39 is how that's as high as I go. I feel like it's probably going to be like a $60 or $70 pillow. It's going to be $129. Guys, it's $125. Boom, I almost got Ooh, it. You were so, so close. I mean, yeah. it's a it's an amazing pillowed experience with Kirby. It's an experience. Yeah. That's what because you're paying for. you're sticking for. your head in his mouth. You're paying for the experience in this. That's right. That's at least $100 of the, of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So you yeah, could get it for twenty five. How if it long was just does that pillow. novelty last, though? Really? Well, it you just know. depends on how comfortable he really is. He only—it's a one-time experience. I just feel like my head would be sweating all night long while I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You never know. You might need it when it's really, really cold outside. I just put my head under the blanket. He could have a built-in heater up above him. Are so you to start a fire? <laughs> Shit. I'm just, I'm just suggesting things, you know. All right. Uh, let's get on to some release dates. We've got quite a few here. Quite a few. All right. First of all, on November 13th, we have Spyro Reignited Trilogy plus the Spyro Reignited Trilogy plus Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy Bundle coming out for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Then Hitman Season 2 comes out on PC. Project High Rise Architect Edition for PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Uh, NK 40th Anniversary Collection for Nintendo Switch. Knowledge is Power Decades for PS4, which I'm excited about. Knowledge is Power Knowledge Decades. Is power. Ooh, I love that game. Uh, Word Hunters for PS4. Chimp Party for PS4. Just Deal With It for PS4. My Riding Stables, Life with Horses oh my God. for PS4 Peyton, and Nintendo I'm Switch. That for Peyton. You're going to get that for her? She would love that game, dude. She plays Horse World. That's what she plays all well, the time. There you go. <laughs> and you can get it for her for the thing that you said you were going to get her and just wait. Which I won't say because maybe she listens to the podcast, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it. I probably said too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Shadow the of the fact Tomb- she's getting anything at all is a surprise. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the Forge DLC for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The Sims 4 Seasons DLC for PS4. Aces of... Four seasons? Uh-huh. PS4, sorry. Sims 4 Seasons. <laughs> seasons. When you said... I, I knew it came out already, but then you... It, Snuck in there too late about PS4. Sorry. Gotcha. Uh, Aces of Luftwaffe Squadron. Uh, I'm going to try this. Nebel Squadron. Nebel It's It's German. Uh, DLC. It's a DLC for a plane, I'm going to assume. It's for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. It comes out on November 13th. Figure it out for yourself. I'm not going to go into any more detail. <laughs> Uh, November 14th, we have Fallout 76 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. You getting that? Probably not. Why? Because I got too much on yeah, my plate. I'll probably still be playing yeah. freaking Red Dead. Um, <coughs> Melbit's World for PlayStation 4. This War of Mine Stories, the last broadcast for PC. Huh. YouTuber's Life OMG Edition. Ah. Ah. What is that game? I don't know. For PlayStation I've 4. I've actually played it. Have you? <laughs> yeah. What is it? it? <laughs> it's 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 a it's a sim game where you play like trying to become an internet star. So you're just like you start off in your home and you can choose to either be like a musician, a gamer, or there's like a couple of other things, and you build up your YouTube empire by mm-hmm. making videos, editing, and there's like little uh uh mini games for when you're making the video whether you hit the right oh, emotion okay. or something like that you know mm-hmm. it's a cute little one like a once time through but it's not i know <laughs> don't no. anyway YouTubers- I, I i'm willing to try a lot of different kinds of games yes. <laughs> okay well anyway youtubers live omg edition for playstation 4 xbox one and a nintendo switch and then <laughs> my hero we figured this out it's my hero one's justice Playable character, DLC, uh, I'm not even going to attempt that name, for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Then on November 15th, we have SNK Heroes Tag Team Frenzy, Miss X DLC for PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, Trailblazers for Nintendo Switch. Uh, here we go. Gesizu Gagagagagi Nakamaka. I'm not going to try it. There's a game called Geshu. I'm sh- I'm sure if you've heard of it and you want to play it, you you know it. Geshizu, Geshizu for the Nintendo Switch. Let's just say that. <laughs> and then we've got Hopiko for the Nintendo Switch, Solitaire Battle Royale for Nintendo Switch, and Mother Russia Bleeds for Nintendo Switch. Then finally on Nintendo or November 16th, I'm trying to say Nintendo. It's flying out of my mouth. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu for Nintendo Switch. The Sims 4 Get Famous DLC for PC, Sid Meier Civilization 6 for Nintendo Switch, My Stables, My Riding Stables, Life with Horses 2 for PC, and Circle of Sumo for Nintendo Switch. <sighs> there we and go. And scene. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we're done with release dates, it is time for What the hell did you just say? That's right, guys. I have uh, <coughs> my brain's gonna work too many. Today. 
Uh, it's not. It's not too many. I'm gonna do two of them today, and then I'm out. No, you're gonna do more than that. <laughs> Three. That's my. That's my. All right. Plan. Who wants I feel to go? Like three to four is ex- is acceptable. <laughs> who wants to go first? Lace goes first. She's okay. a lady. Lace goes first. Okay, Lace. So <laughs> your first game is BB and Tina Adventures with Horses. BB and Tina Adventures with Horses. Oh, um, this is. Uh, it's kind of like akin to those old school Barbie games. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just a really simple, like, point-and-click adventure um, in this fictional world, obviously, kind of like My Little Pony, but it's their version of, you know, the, the cutesy little horses. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're just taking BB and Tina through um, their summer vacation and all of the cool different places that they got to visit. You go with them to Paris on the horses. You go with them to, you know, London. And, um, yeah, it's just this really exciting um child's point and click adventure game all right so uh todd my turn yeah owl watch jesus (laughs) um this owl owl damn you (laughs) why could i get (laughs) bb and tina because i mean owl watch owl watch Mm -hmm. huh i mean it sounds pretty cut and dry to me but yeah it's like you it's probably like a bird watching simulator, and you try to find owls. Mm-hmm. Do you have to categorize and identify them? No, you just need to find an owl. Okay, but like I'm thinking, maybe <laughs> maybe you're an owl. You know, how like I always see that owl with the binoculars. Mm-hmm. What if you're the owl and you're watching for trouble, and you got to go around and go who 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 and, and alert people? <laughs> okay, I mean that, that, that second one does robots. sound more interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. You are the owl. Okay. And you're on like city watch. You got to protect the city, and you hit, you can fly around. Like you only have this one perimeter that you can go around. And there's seven different s- little subdivisions that you protect. Mm-hmm. And you have to, uh, you know, you have to level up and get to a certain area to where you can move to the next. When you when you've got rid of all the crime, you start out with a little petty crimes like somebody coming up try to key a car. Who who who? <laughs> and they come out of the house. What the hell are you doing? You know, and you win. You level up. Okay. You get better binoculars. Um, maybe your hearing gets a little better. You fly a little further. Yeah, that's how it goes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that sounds fine. And, uh, I, and I feel like it would star Rupert Booth. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, for sure. If you don't to get that, wings. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get that, go watch videos. Uh, <laughs> Lace, mm-hmm. Super Captain 3D. Super Captain 3D. So this is a this is a VR game, and um, it's actually kind of trying to be a ripoff of Captain America. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how there's that uh, VR game where you're playing Spider Man or whatever. So it's just it's 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 not a very well thought out game. Sure. Um, I think it only lasts about 20, 25 minutes, um, even at full price. But um, so you are trying to become the captain of this fictitious world. We'll say it's a uh, captain um south america sure. and uh and you're taking yourself through your journey as you're gathering your crew and you know just to give you the feel of what it's like to throw things from a superhero's perspective and um um become captain south america <laughs> <laughs> captain south america is what she said <laughs> what is it captain super captain super captain 3d yeah not yeah, captain south it's america a vr game yeah. yeah it's just yeah that's the parentheses. Is Captain mm-hmm. South America. All right, Todd. Yeah. Video game. Oh, Jesus. It's a ripoff of Ready Player One. Okay. Video game, really? Yeah, just video game. Just video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a pixel art kind of game. Almost done in like, like an Atari game. Okay. And I think that it goes... It's kind of like a... Uh, like a timeline of how video games change each mm. level is. And it's just a side scroller. Okay. And, and there could be like a mixture, like some top down in there, just depending on what, what, what they chose. What, what do you think? I mean, it sounds kind of boring. I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. play it. Yeah. I would play Owl Watch before I'd play this game. <laughs> you can't win them all, man. No. Right. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lace. Red Dead. Red. Hentai horse. Oh my god. 
There's oh time. no! <laughs> um, so this is uh, actually um, one of those documentary type games where it's um, an interactive movie about the guy who had to program all of the uh, horse balls in Red Dead Redemption. Oh shit! <laughs> Horse balls. So it's taking you through all of the painful um, trials and tribulations that this person endured to make sure everything was completely 100% accurate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of decisions to be made. It's like basically like something will pop up really fast, you know, and speed up the music. Like Dodge getting kicked by the horse because he was obviously all up in there trying mm-hmm. to make sure everything was accurate. Um, and then you got to hit the button and like QTE events to get out of the way in time and things like that. And um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Whatever. You'd play it, Todd. Yeah, I'll probably help design it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Todd. Lazy man. Oh, God. Lazy man. Um, This game is trying to do as least as possible. You have to solve these missions, but you have to make, you have to do little as possible to finish them. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to save this woman from a burning. You, you're okay. Picture this: you're in your recliner that has wheels, and it's just rolling down the street because you don't, you don't do anything except sit in your recliner. Mm-hmm. But you see, there, there's a fire, and there's a woman burning up in this fire. And you have to, you have 10 moves on this first level that you can make to save her. And you just got to figure out to, how to save her in less than 10 moves. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fair Because you're a lazy man. You don't want to do a whole lot. No, of course not. Of course, the super secret option of just calling 911 mm-hmm. yep. and doing nothing. Don't You don't know anything <laughs> about that. Or, or just driving on by. Right. Okay, Lace. Drunk Dad. Drunk dad. Oh, man. I feel like this is another one of those, like, uh, Betty's Beer Bar time management games um, where you're playing the dad, uh, but you're not supposed to be drinking, so Mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out how to sneak out and get drunk. And it's like little mini games of like um, running into the bar and then hopefully figuring out how to slam a bunch of shots before like, you know, your older kids who are like 22, 23, trying to look after dad finds out (laughs) where you are Mm -hmm. and takes you home before you can get drunk. And so it's just it's about 10 levels, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, Very, very small world that you can move through. Um, and so you're trying to figure out which bar that you can dodge into and find the best way to hurry up and slam as many drinks as possible before, you know, the children who care about you come and take you home. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Todd. I like it. <clears throat> Gangsta Sniper. Oh, yeah. Like, um, you, Okay. Oh, God, this would be a bad one. Like, with all the shooting and stuff, this is not going to be a good description. <laughs> uh, gangsta Sniper, you are... I was going to say, this. Is, you're, you're a member of the MS-13 gang, and you're a gangsta, Mexican gangsta, mm-hmm. and a cholo, and uh, you, you're just a sniper of the group, and you got to, you know, help them get through missions. You're going to just sit back and snipe people off for them. Okay. You just help them through the mission. That's it? That's it. Yeah, it's just simple. Simple game. Simple game. 99 cents. No steam. All right. Uh, Lace. Spray girl. I'm sorry? Spray girl. Spray girl. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is actually an art game. We've been looking forward to it for a while. So um, it's it's sort of open world. Like they do give you an open city to roam in. And um, you just have to find all of the coolest places that you can um, do your graffiti. <clears throat> so uh, it, it's, it's kind of like paint by number. Mm-hmm. But you've got to find in your quest log the specific places that you're supposed to go tag. And then uh, you get points accordingly to how fast you found the the spot and how quickly you've um, completed the uh, artwork. Okay. And it lasts as long as long as you can keep uh, painting, spraying the spray paint. That's the word. <laughs> spray <Okay>. paint. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Todd, last one. And, I mean, I really want to hear a good one out of this. Okay. Human rocket person. Human rocket person. Mm-hmm. Damn. You got to figure out how to launch a person into space without blowing them up, like, completely. Like, they're the rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, like, how would you do that? I don't know. Huh. Like, uh, okay, I guess you could, like, okay, maybe I sit them in a chair and put them on top of dynamite. Mm -hmm. Or, okay, that didn't work. So I use dynamite. Um, I put them in a box on top of a chair mm -hmm. on top of the dynamite with, uh, like, landmines under it. And eventually you human rocket into space. That is okay. the dumbest thing. And the, why did you want me to do something good with you? Didn't give me any material. Like I could <laughs> Red Dead Hentai Horse. I would have tore that one all to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's <clears throat> probably why he did it on purpose. That's yeah. Right. I want to. I want to give you the challenge. Yeah. That. Uh, that was worked that brain. Mm -hmm. uh, that game is not going to sell. Well, you never know. I mean, just just hearing you describe it, I'm sitting there thinking, you know what? That actually could be kind of fun. For a you know, minute, you have to you have to work out the puzzle mechanics of trying to launch. Yeah, someone I was going to say space. like a puzzle game, yeah. and you're given yeah, yeah. so many um, materials on how you can put it together in a short time frame or something. Mm -hmm. to you got to adjust their space. flight pattern. Yeah, right. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. You're thinking. See? Oh, this is this is going to be game of the year contender. <laughs> I'm changing my okay. opinion on it. All right, well, that's all I got. So let's Thank move God. on to our review of the week. Lace, you what, are what talking she got? about the shape-shifting detective. Boom. Yes. Now, if anyone uh, listened to or actually got to see our uh, special video, Lace's stream, where she we actually spoke with uh, Rupert Booth and Anna Rosa, what's her last name? I know she, uh, Anna Rosa de Azaguire Butler. She ah. said I pronounced it right, so I'm going with it. And then also Nicholas Popel. It was a mm -hmm. uh, wonderful interview. Wonderful people. They're, they were great. Yeah. And so what do you think about this game? Is it wonderful too? Uh, well, um, I'm probably the perfect one for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I've, uh, I've probably played it way more than someone should in the short period of time that it's been um released uh but shapeshifting detective this is actually the second fmv from devecki studios which the first was the infectious madness of dr decker um so if anybody has uh been to my streams or heard me talk about it you know or even on the fmv retrospective mm. that i did nah, what a month or so ago um that that was easily probably in my top five of fmvs of all time so i i am a fan of devecki's work so i might be going into this already a little biased um, but this easily kind of crept in there as well. So I have three full playthroughs already under my belt. So I feel like I, I can really give you a great idea of how this game is played. Uh, but the play style is a lot different. Um, in Dr. Decker, you actually typed your answers or questions that you wanted for the people. Um, and of course, if you hit the right keyword, depending on what answers you would get or scenes you would unlock. Um, but, but it was later added once it was to console to have the drop down menu, which made it more like a point and click game. So if you were like, oh, I played that on PlayStation, that's not how it worked well. Be thankful because you don't want to be trying to type everything out on a PlayStation. No. Uh, but you got your responses based on the keywords you would use. But on Shapeshifting Detective, this is a little bit more of a basic play style where you choose the answers that are given to you. And depending on which ones you choose determines what you unlock to learn more about the story. Uh, so in the Shapeshifting Detective, you play as Sam, a shapeshifter with possibly a sordid past, you find out in the beginning. So your first character you come across is Agent X which he gives you your instructions. Don't get caught. Never, ever change into a child. Only shift in private. Find somewhere safe to transition. You are not a superhero. Now, bear in mind, you are given options as to whether you would like to follow these instructions or just flat out throw them out the window. Hmm. This game does beg for at least two playthroughs because you find out you're going to investigate the murder of Dorota Shaw, who is a local cellist and beloved figure in the town of August, which is where your story will take place. <clears throat> So after you are debriefed by Agent X, you head into the town of August. You're greeted by Violet, uh, played by Aslan Diath, if I'm saying her last name right, uh, mm -hmm. the owner of the guest house where you'll be staying during your investigation. 
She has uh, some none too lovely things to say about the people there that are staying there and, and directs you to meet with Chief DuPont, the local authority, uh, Chief DuPont played by Rupert Booth. He's the uh, local authority in town who hired you. She briefs you on the tarot readers, a party of three who came into town to warn of the murder of Dorota before it happens by the power of Mercury Tarot. And you learn quite quickly they were not successful and in fact is now at the top of the list of suspects. Um, which is probably quite fair to say if you come into town warn of a murder, then they're dead. <laughs> um, so as you go to your room, uh, you are met with the apparent, as you're heading towards your room in the guest house, I should say, this is when you first meet with the uh, apparent leader of the Tarot Readers Bronwyn Castle, uh, who is played by uh, Anna Rosa de Azaguire Butler. You can be persuaded to have a reading and learn a small amount about her and where she is staying in the guest house gives you the rundown of where her friends are staying Lexi and Rain and at this point you go to your room listen to more instructions from Agent X and then I decided to go meet with Chief DuPont so Chief DuPont is kind of your point of contact in the shape-shifting detective. He fills you in on the situation at hand, gives you your rules that he would like you to follow. Uh, he wants you to not let people know that he hired you, say that it was Dorota Shaw's family that hired you, because apparently there isn't a lot of faith in the local authorities in the town of August. Mm -hmm. um, so he wants you to try to find out what happened and report back to him with his findings, because he knows Sam, you, um, are an amazing detective. He doesn't know why. He just knows you get it done. So you have been hired to do this. So you find out his highest suspect is Bronwyn, and he wants you to go easy on Violet. So now you're starting to find there might be a little bit of history there with Violet and Chief DuPont. Um, so in return for your help, he offers to get rid of your problem and says he will make it go away. Um, your paper trail will go to the bottom of the list and just disappear. At this point, you don't know what that is. So you're getting a little bit more into the history of your character. But now's where I say the game truly begins. And your murder mystery commences. So here's where now you can free play as any of the characters by using your shape-shifting ability, or you can stay as Sam. So the game will give you an out to move on to the next chapter quite quickly if you want, but I encourage you to keep investigating because there's a lot of story to learn. I, of course, chose to stay in the game as long as I thought humanly possible because with over 1,600 hours of full HD FM videos to see, I want to take in the full experience. God. So I, of course, start off as what? Sam and interrogate every single character uh, that's available to me at this time. I start with Violet, learn her thoughts on Dorota. Violet seems to not be a big fan of hers, uh, but this early in the game, it's just catty talk or gossip, as she likes to call it. Um, she informs you of Oscar, who's played by Joe Mott, and I find him adorable. <laughs> I just have to put that in there. Like, I love his character. Uh, the deceased boyfriend who lives, uh, the deceased's boyfriend, he is not dead, um, who lives at the vicarage. She tells you of the other guests staying at the guest house. Uh, then I move on to Bronwyn, learn that she is at the top of the list of suspects from Chief DuPont, and she would like your help to clear her name. She informs you that she is here in town because the Mercury tarot cards predicted Dorota's murder. She is the figurehead for uh, these three tarot readers, and the other two take their cues from her on how much they will divulge to you. Then I go visit Rain, the intellectual of the group, played by Nicholas Popple. He will hammer you with info if you choose to listen uh, for a more specific, more studied approach about the tarot and the group <laughs> reading that brought them to August. He thinks he might say too much and wants to check in with Bronwyn, whether more details of why they came to August and what they were doing there before he proceeds. Uh, then you go to Lexi. She's a Ouija board reader and the liaison between the spirit world, or is it the spirit world? I'll let you uh, figure that out when you play the game, or if you do. Uh, you learn right away she becomes quite fond of you as Sam, and you can decide whether you would like to go along with her advances or let mm. her down. She is more of a nervous, overly chatty type, so you learn she is very dedicated to Bronwyn, though. She seems to slip up a time or two very early on, which my hyper brain starts to make me feel like I should be suspicious, suspicious of her too soon. Uh, but I always uh, get you know, taken away with these types of things. Like, I know you're trying to throw me off. This is too early, right? It's like the first 10 minutes of uh, any TV show. So after talking with everyone I could, I then went into my room and now's where the real fun begins. Now you can shape shift into any of the characters that you have just talked to. Uh, so if you play your cards right, <clears throat> uh, then here's where you really start to delve into learning about everyone and how they all fit in together in the story. You definitely learn more about everyone as they uh, think they are talking to someone else. So unless you act too weird or they catch on that something is off, 
Um, again, the choice is yours, how you want to handle this. Don't forget that you might learn something new and might want to go back and shift into someone else to further pull the thread you started to unravel. This was a feature I would say I spammed nonstop because I didn't want to miss anything. So, for instance, Rain didn't want to tell you about what was going on. He needed to find out, well, Bronwyn, eh, well, maybe I shouldn't say anything. So now you go shift into Bronwyn, come back and be like, it's totally okay to tell Sam everything it is. And as long as you play it cool, he'd be like, all right, all right, I'll talk about it. It's fine. Um, So you are also sometimes given the choice to say nothing at all. Now, if you're like me, it's hard to pass up anything, but sometimes keeping your mouth shut is exactly what you need to do here. Um, Agent X tells you in the beginning, you should learn to keep your mouth shut. And a dialogue will pop up with a trash can next to it. This was kind of a clever tutorial because if you keep hitting the dialogue provided, he'll just simply say, rewind, and you are forced to watch the whole beginning credits again. This will continue till you learn to, in fact, keep your mouth shut. So by pressing the trash can and holding the button until the dialogue is gone is the only way to not say anything. So sometimes you actually learn much more by letting them continue on or best to not push their buttons to where they shut down and don't want to talk at all. But again, the choice is yours. So the cast of characters, in my opinion, are just, they're wonderfully different and fun to explore. I do believe the cast did a fantastic job carrying out these scenarios, moving to reacting to one another, along with the differences in how they react depending on your choices was very well done. FMV games of today relies heavily on good storytelling and the actors guiding you through, I think. So I think this job was very well done. Uh, the music score in the game is simple, yet fits perfectly to match the mood uh, they were going for. And a simple piano background along with uh, the, the radio that they've put in there that plays with Poe and Monroe, the local uh, radio personalities. Uh, you're given a Decker brand radio. <laughs> Nod to you for the throwback nice. to your previous game, Devecki. Um, and from there, in between talking scenes, you have short horror stories that play written specifically for the game and voiced by fans of Devecki Games. A lot of them were streamers or just fans of the games that uh, did the voiceovers for these short horror stories on the radios, <clears throat> myself included. <clears throat> um, all of the, <laughs> but all of the stories voiced, uh, they did a really great job. They gave the sound a nice old timey feel to it, which adds to kind of the creepiness that the game's wanting you to feel. Um, once you've played the game completely through once, you do have the option to listen to any of the stories or you can turn the radio off and on. Um, so it's up to you if you'd like to hear that in between um, talking to the different cast of characters. Um, so if you're doing a speed run of this game, it lasts about two hours. Uh, but if you're wanting to go all in and question everything, it can take about six hours with randomly generated killers at the start of each playthrough. There are plenty to explore. And that's why I said earlier, it begs for at least two playthroughs, mm-hmm. um, if not even three to discover all the scenes. Um, right now, I think they're only charging about 12 bucks for this game. The 20% pre-order might be over because it, ha- well, why would it be pre-order? Because it has released on November 6th. Uh, but all in all, you can probably tell I'm already a big fan of this game. Um, I've completed it three times, uh, started my fourth, um, and I still haven't even got 100% on the achievements for it. So there's still <laughs> scenes that I've somehow not managed to unlock. I think a lot of them is with uh, Dorota scenes. Um, don't know how to work that one guy, I guess, well enough to, uh, <laughs> to get uh, enough out of him. Um, so, But I will put a waiver on this game, though. Um, there are pretty adult situations, but it's not no nudity, but um, it can lead to pretty uh, hilarious scenes because um, it can get pretty graphic in how you talk <laughs> to them about it. And then you're just going to die laughing if you're that type. I don't know. Maybe all the blood will rush to your face. Um, but especially if you want to try and go for broke, which I recommend doing for science. Push those buttons <laughs> and see how far you can get these people to go with you. Because um, by the end of it, uh, I, w- I guess I was quite trampy, is all I'm going to say. Because every time the option popped up, I'm like, yeah, let's see where this goes. Men, women, I don't care. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you got the, the, the most perfect reaction or not what you were expecting at all. So, yeah, uh, in my book, pick it up if you like FMVs. This uh, Devecki, they did another great FMV game. Nice. Going to keep buying all their stuff. And this is on PS4? Man. It's on all of the platforms. Awesome. It's on PC, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. I so will this time they did a full it. release across the board. Mm-hmm. You should pick it up. I really do recommend it if you like F and B, especially. I've never played one. Mystery. Never? never, never, never have I ever. I've watched wow. them one and two, but I've just never played one. Yeah, this one might be a good starter way because again, with it being on the Switch or PlayStation or whatever, um, you're not having to 
type out the questions like you did with Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker, but um, mm-hmm. it's a nice, easy one to just kind of kick back and watch because there's not any QTEs you're going to be fighting with or anything like that. Right. You're just, you can enjoy the story. You're not timed nice. on anything to feel pressure to hurry through. Um, yeah. Thumbs up for me. Thumbs up for me. Well, good deal. Well, I'm definitely going to check it out at some yeah, point. You piqued my interest. It's really good. All right. I like a good murder mystery, though. You know, I do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, um, I and I've actually was fortunate enough for each playthrough to have a different killer. Mm-hmm. I've seen some people do reviews where, unfortunately, I guess they got like the same one three times in a row or something like that. Oh, that so sucks. I don't know if everyone could be the killer. I'll I'll throw that out there. Um, but I have gotten three different ones. Well, that's cool. And and guessed it right once. Nice. At least you, at least you guessed <laughs> out of it all right. Those times. <laughs> I keep talking myself out of it. It's one of those where I'm like, oh, there's so many people who could be guilty. All right, fine. And if I would have just gone with my gut, I probably would have gotten them right all three times. But mm-hmm. I overthink the whole thing. They do a good job of tricking you. Mm-hmm. Hmm? They, do, they do a good job of tricking you. <clears throat> yes. Sure. Yes, they do. <laughs> That's good writing, though. That's good writing. Make you yeah. second guess yourself. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. I recommend it. Well, that's our show. That's it. All right. Thank you to all of our listeners. We appreciate you every week. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash pencil and paper productions or <laughs> pencil and paper productions dot podbean dot com and click become a patron in the top right hand corner. You can follow us on Twitter at Super Mega Crash. You can email us at Super Mega Crash at gmail dot com. Follow us on Instagram at Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. <laughs> Tell your friends to find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast <laughs> Network, found on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you find your podcasts. And also be sure to check us out on Twitch, Sundays at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you so much for listening. I am Stephen White. And I'm uh, <coughs> coughing my head off. <coughs> you all right there, buddy? Yeah, I don't know. I think I've swallowed a fly. Oh, okay. Todd Stark. <laughs> and I'm Lacey of <laughs> <coughs> I'm good now. You done? I oh, could be dead by the, you know, the live streams. I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, join us again <laughs> next time, Super Mega Crash Crew. But until then, game on. Pencil and Paper Podcast Network Production.